Well, I, I fear that we may have students trickling in at the architectural time frame instead of on time. So uh, nonetheless, I think we should just keep moving at this point. So I'm going to start the introduction. Um, welcome to the first event in our Thursday departmental lecture series for the spring of 2013. <coughs> Most everybody in here knows who I am, but just in case, I'm Joel Amir. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Architecture and co-curator, actually, of the lecture series for this term. Our department head and my uh, curatorial co-conspirator, Nader Tarani, is in Toronto delivering a lecture of his own tonight, so unfortunately he cannot be here. But that's good for me, in a certain way, because it means I get to set the terms of the lecture series, and I get to introduce his first speaker. As you probably uh, have seen on our unapologetic extreme contrast poster for the series, uh, the spring lecture series has been rather wryly titled Instituting Technology. I say wry because it, as a title it is glaringly incomplete. Ubiquitous technological prowess and emerging digital processes may promise new means and methods and will undoubtedly institute themselves, but they fa fall flat in the absence of disciplinary investment. For this reason, we have focused the series on accomplished practitioner designers whose built work manifests each a real commitment to advanced technologies and broader concerns informed by project materialization. Architects, uh, uh, speakers include architects Matthias Kohler and Patricia Patko, artist Sarah Oppenheimer, and others over the course of the semester. Each are explicit in the development of a conceptual thickness that transcends the mere instantiation of technique. Understood in these terms, we could not have a better speaker to launch the series. Tonight you will hear from Wolfgang Lorch, co-founder co of Bondel Hopper Lorch Architects and a professor at TU Darmstadt. <laughs> uh, I will forego listing the many accolades and awards von der Hoffer Lorch has earned since its founding in 1994 for the sake of speaking quickly to the topic at hand and to their incredible work. The title of Professor Lorch's talk, Material Zeit, uh, should conjure timely reverberations for us, where discussions around materiality are always on our lips. Often these discussions are engulfed by conversations around performance, effect, or as I might occasionally be guilty of, form and geometry. But for Vondelhofer Lorch, materiality is saturated also with cultural value, connotation, and history. Larger agendas are laid bare in their material premises, along, always alongside, I have to say, a remarkable facility and disciplinary aplomb. This multivalency is evident in all of their work. The restrained but exuberant ruled surfaces of the Dresden Synagogue hinted an animate self-responsiveness, or site responsiveness, excuse me, while referencing the darker history of Semper's demolished work. The lightness of that figure is set against the structural weight alluded to in the corbeling of successive courses. This juxtapositional theme is extended in their Jewish center in Munich, whose stone base binds the airy synagogue building to the composer vanity of the community center as a whole. And perhaps most evidently, the Corten steel shell of the Hinsert Document Center recalls a specific disciplinary history, namely the canonical text on weathering by Leather Barrow and Mostafavi, which set the tone for the discourse around time and material and architecture a full generation ago now, believe it or not. Yet this originating premise, the Corten with its constraints, structural and constructive mandates, is not formally causal. The form itself is fluid, responsive, contingent and not confined to a single hermeneutic. <clears throat> For Vondelhofer Lorch, materiality does not seem to be a question of performance and optimization, but of interpretation and reference. Uh, so before I descend too far into my too specific reading of their work there, uh, I'd like to channel Nader for just a moment, who, who wanted to send along a sentiment or two. When we were organizing the series, uh, Vondelhofer Lorch was a, a top priority for us, in a sense, because of the allegiance between their work and the, the topic uh, of the series as a whole, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to quote Nader really quickly here. All right, so quote, I was first alerted to the work of Vondelhofer Lorch upon their completion of the Dresden Synagogue. They have come leaps and bounds since then, but when I saw that building, it alerted me to a conceptual trigger that they had unleashed that was strictly disciplinary. In that building, there is a tension between the constraints of material usage, the means and methods of aggregation, and the building technology on one hand, and on the other, the author's willful and deliberative figurative impulses to liberate the spatial development of the building from the shackles of its building technologies. In this tension emerges the formal, spatial, and technonic richness of their work. 
and then here I chopped a little bit out of Nader's personal narrative, because we do want to hear you speak eventually. Um, but he continues, quote, their work continues to address the atmospheres, the effects, and the unspecified qualities of transcendent architecture. But what remains significant is the way they bring discipline, rigor, and constraints to the process as a mechanism of intellectual gatekeeping. In a time when almost ev ev everything and anything is being defined as architecture, they are raising the bar and making it harder for just anything to qualify. It is no secret that I take their work deeply personally, with my own agendas being deeply indebted to theirs, and it is with great regret that I'm unable to be there tonight to at least meet Lord in person. I'm happy to leave it at that, and I think we should. So I too am thrilled to have him lecture for us here tonight, so please join me in welcoming Volkan Borch. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for to this. Yeah, we'll I want to show tonight our approach to uh, to to material and second the name of the lectures material material time or I say material material zeit. I want to show seven or eight projects. The, our first project, the Bernerplatz, is a, is a memorial and it has, it has some technological aspects. The second project is also a memorial in Berlin. It came more from, yeah, it's one part of architectural practice close to, to art, but we are not artists, we are architects. Then the two synagogues with it, or two synagogues with it, with it more, you know, trace the unit, you speak about it. Uh, two document centers, one in Ravensbrück and Inset, close to the Luxembourg border, or close to Luxembourg. And then one project out of context totally out of twenties in Georgia, in Tbilisi. It's something a small high rise building in another context. And last but not least uh, the the city hall in the middle of middle of Cologne, the new archaeological museum in the on the city hall square in Cologne. That's the range of projects I wanted to show, but probably the time is over and I I showed half of the projects. I start with I start with I will start with there was a there was an exhibition two years ago, Material Time in, in, in the Pinakothek in Munich, but it's it's about our work. And I will start with the first project, this so-called Bernabas. We are I and my partners, we are still students when we won the competitions. It's easy because it was an artist competition and everybody is an artist. You know, there's an artist to 250 um, people to give their entries to the competition. It was, it was, in, it was the Bernard Platz in Frankfurt. A show. It's virtually nothing is left to the Bernabas to recall that for centuries it was the center of Jewish life in Frankfurt. The Jewish market, the synagogue, the Judengasse, which was the home of the, uh, of the Rothschild family in the right and uh, Ludwig Berner, have all disappeared. Destruction and displacement, by all means, in a spatial sense, have obliterated everything. But the the old Jewish cemetery, this is the wall of the Jewish cemetery, is still remains. Uh, because the new Bernabot is not integrated with an urban texture of Frankfurt, we dedicated, contrary to the competition guidelines, to make the cemetery uh, the centerpiece of a memorial. It was the, at least, to find 
some something. It was a centerpiece. We make more than eleven thousand individual blocks bearing the name of Frankfurt Jews in Europe, driven by that, as well as the place of deportation. Rather than having the names homogenized into a single large object, object here they are individualized on solitary steel blocks, but they don't look like steel. Each projecting out of the wall with us four centimeters, thus allowing space on the top for the placement of a stone of remembrance according to the Jewish tradition. Moreover, the almost 300 meter long cemetery wall could now the two name blocks form a way of connecting the memorial to the urban, to the urban texture. It's not divided to the urban texture, to the surrounding. You see the context of the Batrushstrasse here at this slide. Consequently, the memorial is not isolated for more than only on certain days according to protocol as it were, but incorporated instead into everyday city life. The cemetery wall becomes a boundary between those who have been laid to rest inside and those who have no grave. Behind the busy battle passes is the slide with this traffic passes by and line up of one old building after another. Lies in assumes always severe and almost in the forbidden looking garden at the Bechneistrasse, which is the official post war building. Alongside the flanking municipal administration building and its background are closely connected to the recent Frankfurt history. Excavations is shown before. Them. This is the entrance. Excavations of the of Arnold, many of old building stones which were not needed for the architectural reconstruction of the university. The existing masonry from window edges, stairways and walls are assembled to a form of cube similar to a high rack. That's the blocks here. The logic you can see. It's the same for the show and it's the rest of the this rest of the synagogue. And that's the middle of the that's the middle of the place of the new, new Bernadlats in the so-called Spolian and it's like a high rack in the form of the building or this cube is set among a drove of plain trees which provide the cream canopy for visitors from spring until late autumn. The sign marks out the zone between the possible of which we can barely say and the give the material of the site understood in this way that the science its execution lies in the hands of a of a figure between me, the architect and the bricoler who works with life bones. This practice is not is is one that is familiar to those who work with contemporary art. Here the square has not been subjected to occupation, but rather a space had been created in the middle of Frankfurt, allowing for remembrance and pointing towards the future. That's the wall. With also in alphabetic order. This was the first project. Yeah. I, will, I have to speak about material time before I come to the second project. This is Berlin, track 17 at the former railway station at, in Grunewald. I have to say some words about material time it was chosen as the programmed title, describing both the parameters and the sense of our architecture we really understand as the association of material states with concrete periods of time. T 
time refers to the ongoing discourse with historical, political, and social themes. Uh, to us, architecture is an exploration of questions and a response to issue that concerns us all and that weigh heavily upon us. It forms the basis continuum, as it were, ever since winning the competition of the of the Bernadotte Memorial in Frankfurt. Since then, each our designs has arisen out in intense intensive study, not only of the task in the hand, the context and the site, but also of the historical circumstances, which are comprehensively researched and interpreted in a specific architectural way. Buildings, neither, <coughs> buildings are neither formal in, inventions of artistic intuition, nor products of the laws of parametric design, but embody an architectural landscape, but inquiry and discussion. Material signifies the translation of a commission and a in a concept into material form, in a sense of leading three-dimensional expression to, to programs and providing solutions to technical problems in conjunction with time. However, with a political and social setting, uh, design becomes a new form of architectural practices on whose purpose is the express specific connection and layers of meanings with, with a material employed. The art of the architects include deploying materials and, and if necessary, developing new ones to let contemporary concrete shape and meaning to relationship past and present. Architecture becomes a theory led still in the classical sense of techne, the ancient Greek word. In the early years of modern architecture, during its struggle to accept certain materials, were highlighting as holding a particular significance in accordance with the ideals of lighter building system using skeleton constructions and transparent walls, glass, steel and exposed concrete came to be perceived as the expression of a new contemporary purpose and understanding of architecture while brick wood and natural, natural stone were judged to be conservative bourgeois materials. Over the course of years and across several generations of modern architects, this specific materials iconography of modernism was overtaken for for the material properties of a building may disclose entirely other levels of meaning. Site context and concrete time are integrated within the chosen material and give the sh and the shape given to it. The substance in those infused with values that intimate a process of perception will in a turn grants access to the building. Part of this project is the cross reading of elements in the spirit of a hybrid architecture, in which in which your homogeneous cores are created out of opposites in the way the material of architecture become both craft and policy. Designing, I show it later, the new synagogue in Dresden, for example, we adopted, I show it later the color of the Elvis Armstrong characteristic to the cityscape, but without employing the customary oxen, oxidizing natural stone, instead we developed refabricating blocks of concrete diet corresponding color with allowing for a twisted cube with monolithic layers of stone. The reference of the location in the past is established via the material but the latter is in loop with a new meaning of new time, out of the integration and simultaneous transformation in the substance, new relationship and connection are born. The material, the material of the of the cube and the material or the metal 
textile would in his theory establish a <coughs> typological and symbolic link with the two basics from the Jewish house of God, namely the temple and the tabernacle, the monumental <coughs> building and the tent, uh, the, mon and the, tent the topological, local related treatment of the structural fabric fused with the memorial values evoked with a specific materiality. Show some buildings from the, uh, some slides from the former track 70. It is it's also a monument. It's 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 more a um, project in the fourth dimension than in the third dimension. It's horizontal. We have to the site was over after the war. Uh, it was a forgotten site. It was not used over 40 because of the political. It's close to the to the border. It's a real site. It's a scene of crime because the most of the deportations are started here. It's the connection between <coughs> this place in Berlin. It's the connection between Berlin and the and the concentration camps. And we have to we have to work with we won the competition and we did the following thing. We framed we framed the situation and track seventeen has not been used much since at the end of the war and is now overgrown but it's not isolated, but it's, in, it's not an autonomous place excluded from the everyday. Rather, it's a linear, linear element among others, an ordinary, an ordinary place in a context made up of parallel transitory phenomena. The very ordinaries of the place calls attention to note the perception that Walter Benjamin describes as being characteristic of architecture. Of course, much less through rapid attention than by noticing the object of incidental fashion, the mode of appreciation developed with reference to architecture. In certain circumstances, acquires canonical value for the task which faced the human apparatus, the perception at the turning points of history cannot be solved by optical means, that is by contem contemplation alone. They are mastered gradually by habit under the guidance of the tactile appropriation. It's the it's contempla contemplation alone. They are mastered gradually by habit under the guidance of tactile appreciation. It is it is precisely in place of transaction, like train stations where perception is indeed fleeting. Applied to the question of the monument, perception is not really about the observer standing opposite a monumental object in order to view in a state stasis, but rather more about perceiving things in passing, literally things directly associated with motion and walking. is an essential parameter of the monument. The material requires specific, specific significance. It has to be constructed so that the data remains inscribed on site for as long as possible with an with a unforgiving possession of the engineer. Time-related factors can be researched through construction physics and then further 
developed. The material strategy can also be contextually based. After all, the history of train stations is closely connected to the intention of cast iron. The material becomes a reference of traveling and the constant constitution of commodities. Yet, how transitory or durable is the material? To what extent is one responsible for the implications inherent in a type of material? And to what degree this discourse is linked to time, even and a partly in a partly transitory material like iron is subjected to discourse's transformation. The first iron structures served transitory purposes as market halls, train stations, exhibition halls. Hence iron is immediately connected to functional aspect, aspects of economic life. Yet was in those days functional and transitory beginning to appear formal and stable due to changing pace of the present day. As material, cast iron can be even more stable, made to fit the, in, it fit the in intervention to track 70. Its dura durability can be strengthened by adding laminar graphite. Ultimately, however, the answer of the question of the material is a contingent decision in refer the event that is not to be remembered, it is not counterpart of a, a, a translation in imitation or given a type of construct pity at the end, it is a decision to use corrosion corrosion resistant cast iron. We inscribed we used the, the archive of the former Reichsbahn. We described in the at the edge of the of the platform, of the former truck uh, platform, the dates and the number of the deportations uh, started at this point and inscribed and inscribed the this information in this place. And it's the other tracks still in use are are, in, um, are related. It's, it's not a monument separate to to life. It's, it's part of Berlin at least, and it's as I said it before. It's a scene of crime because it's it's not an artificial it's not an artificial place like the. Uh, the great monument done by Sarah and Eisenman. The way we did it, Burn. The synagogue burns at the night, at 
the so-called Weizsäs Danacht, the 9th of November, 1883. And, and the, on, the other, on the other side, I, I say it's a double destruction of Dresden. And, um, and on the 13th and 14th, February 45, the Allied bombing raid destroyed the rest of, of Dresden. The first destruction was made by Germans, itself by, and, and after this, at least, everything is, is gone. The destructions are historically linked, yet the architectural consequences couldn't be more different. On the one hand, Dresden responses uh, on the one hand, Dresden reproduces the historical monuments like the Frauenkirche and the most, as the most emblematic reconstruction, establishing a false continuity in a problematic pretense of architectural stability. On the other hand, the new synagogue represents an attempt which investigates the conflict between stability and fragility between the permanent and temporarily. We say, in the, for the Jews, I would say, the contemporary of the temple and the tabernacle. Oh, back. Yeah, the, the, the Mangin David is the only thing who is the guy, the fireman, take a toe. And in the 70s, he gave back to the he gave back to the community. It's the only thing. It's it's still physically there. We use it for the use of it. That's that's the Semper Synagogue or a drawing of the Semper Synagogue. It looks like typical 19th century or not? Yeah, 19th century. It looks like. Yeah, more than a place of worship. It can be a church, but it's not a church. It's a church with Mark and David at the, the top. And this is the reconstruction or the response of this of the Frauenkirche. Please look at the at the poster here. It's also interesting. I would say in Frauenkirche, in in less than one generation forward, in 20 years, the com the complete surrounding of the Frauenkirche, it looks like uh, the 17th century, and the city doesn't tell something about the history. Next picture. Dresden is einmal war. It means Dresden once upon a time. On this picture, it's interesting. I saw it when I when I walked to the, to my side. It's to my building side is here. Then I did some research, and I saw the picture was taken in first seven. And the photographer in Dresden once, once upon a time removed, removed the synagogue one year before they burned it down. And uh, it was as was typically. It has no it has, it has no place in this time. Yeah, we we are looking to the basis too of I would say. It's not, it's not a church, the synagogue is older. Our base is the temple. It means the temple, the second temple. It's a uh, drawing from Fischer von Erlach. It's the, yeah, the second temple, the Herodes, and the, the tent. And it means, tent is, the tent is more the, it means the diaspora, at least, it is the, 
it's this it's the, the opposite to stability and these two these two pictures are at least are the theme of our synagogue. The building itself is divided into two parts. The community house close to the, to the town and the place of worship, the synagogue in itself, uh, towards the elder. Inserted, we say, coherence and autonomy, inserted in the sloped topography of the site a central courtyard acts as a connecting element between the various uses of the synagogue and the community center. The physical coherence is maintained by the use of a continuous material, precast concrete stones with sand aggregates, but each, each building, however, has a character of its own. The synagogue is a concentrated place of worship and meditation its structure related to the algorithm and becoming part of the place, the skyline. The community center refers to the urban fabric and creates a new entrance situation in the center of the city. It's the space in between. That's the geometry plan. working with Jewish models, it's necessary to check some things. You can't do it with a... That's the chromatic, that's the, the prefabricated, all the prefabricated massive precast stones we used. Each of, each of these blocks, 60 to 60 to, uh, to 120 centimeters, they are Prefabricated in somewhere in Belgium, best quality we get. Then it's not very sustainable to, to drive them to half Europe, but it's the it was the best quality to get. It's the building in the context. That's the corner. We shift. Say something about temple and tabernacle exploring, exploring the implications of stability and fragility. The architecture of the synagogue is characterized by the material dualism. A monolithic structure of pre-cut concrete stones and the interior structure of, of metallic textile. The twist stone structure of the synagogues follows the geometry of the site and the requiring of an orientation towards the east. The complex curfling where volume is based on a simple gradual shift of 41 orthogonal layers formed by elements in, I tell it, 120, 60, 60. In contrast to the monolithic structure, the interior, Outside. That's the tent in the interior. That's the central Bangladesh. In contrast to the monolithic structure, the interior of the synagogue is framed by a smooth metallic, uh, metallic textile suspended from the concrete ceiling grid. It constitutes the basic space for worship. The brass textile developed with, with a clothing manufacturer provides a specific erratic light. It produced, it produces uh, at least atmosphere. We stand the row says once a set once. There are two two very uh, 
to different things or to tasks for an architect. There is, a, he said, it's a basic worship one on the one hand, or basic worship on the other hand, it's a bar. Both, both of these tasks, the, the most important thing in both tasks is to create the atmosphere. Perhaps the, the textile, the, this erratic light or the or erratic material produce this atmosphere we, we need for the we need for this place of worship. The wooden furniture is diff is different size character, uh, the interior of a tent, a balcony, use the bima and the Torah shrine in the east. The position of the of the central religious element refers and highlights this spatial conflict in the synagogue at both longitudinal and central space. The light is central from, from the top. That's the textile Pakuraban used also the same textile in the seventies to make some clothes of this material. It's a view in the seal. Ninety kilometers north from Berlin, in a small town of Franzburg, near a former health resort, the town of Fürstenberg, was uh, 38 uh, years has constructed the largest, one of the largest concentration camps, or it was the largest concentration camp. The woman in Germany on German soil. It was, it was here in, in 2005. An architectural competition was announced for a new visitor center at this horrible place. This was the site. so-called brutal bone architecture. They are still there in parts. We, we design a, a floating entrance building. And still. And it was translucent. In the background are these these houses are part of the our building is like a bridge between the, the world outside and the entrance. It's because it's yeah, it's a horrible place. The landscape is incredible. There is a sea direct. The, yeah, the visitor center is both the start and the walking. Uh, in the end of the walking circuits and the guided tours in order to leave the historical complex entirely untouched. Uh, we avoid to build on the ground of the former uh, concentration camp and choose a location in the the west of the car park between the entrance area and the lake shrimp is in front of the we designed a rigorously cubic building made of shit. The building in itself is, is made by sandblasted cast uh, class uh, cast 
a special sort of class deal, we say class deal in Germany. And they, we, we sent plans then, and it looks like concrete. But it's during the day.
more drawings. And here. Our uh, competition concept was the idea of um, natural integration of the Jewish center and the structure of the city through public space. Its public nature and its openness can be expressed in a succession of squares, paths, and Passageways between the buildings and the neighborhood. Community centered the chief synagogue and the Jewish Museum of the city are a balanced ensemble in their own autonomy formulated and across their spaces correlated. The synagogue in the main building is orientated towards the east and stays free in the public space with a, with a closed stone base and a filigree glass steel construction uh, rising from its center, while the base remains metaphorically in the Temple Salomon, staying symbolically for the constantly as the portative shell surrounding the prayer's room. The metal mesh made of brass, glass, and the construction network of the latter relates to the filigree prototype shift set and the construction dispends in the uh, transensity of light. The Jewish Museum tube the background. The tube, the base and the latter, the material of the synagogue. Inside, it's the the metal construction as thin as possible. It, it's one one and a half fifty millimeters. It's enough to to pull pull the superstructure, the filigree superstructure. To, Museum for the city of Munich is the smallest of the cubes communicates between synagogue and community center. It's here, it's, it's here to decide. It takes up the duality of the synagogue in order its material as a con introverted cube for the exhibition and the glazed ground floor. In the tension between fragility and mass, between openness and compactness, the building of the museum has its own independence and waits beside the cubes in the community center and especially besides the base of the synagogue. This structure is planned as a public meeting and exchange place as the mediator among the three buildings on the square. Uh, the wall view of the community center in the background is fragmented in different cubes. The extensive space and utilization program has to be organized with two underground floors and six other floors housing the youth, a cultural center, and rooms, dining facilities, school, daycare for children, and administration offices. The center is expressed in the Difference uh, in the different uh, buildings and materials which establish relationship. The travertine is used in different shapes and forms, untressed natural stone surrounding the base of the synagogue, polished stone of the museum, and cut slabs are reflecting light and shadow of the facades and around the patios of the community center. The material, the materiality will differ in different structures of the surface until the detail then show the principle of coherence and autonomy. Both parts came close together here to only two and a half meters away. The entrance. 
students to load into a stamp house at the museum. Small lot of practice. For some years, we worked in another field. We, the projects I showed you are very stable, are very long lasting projects. I show five minutes, two, two exhibitions, one in the Orchard House in Frankfurt. We built a house in the house for three, three months for an exhibition. In the other, the other is, uh, is for a welcome trust, another as an exhibition sleeping free. It was a long night and in Dresden. I show you the, to build a room for, to build two rooms for three months and only the catalog remains at least. It's different for us because we build normally we print, but for the first exhibition, we in the Rothschild Palais, you can't go on the walls, you can't go on the ceiling, you can't go on the floor, because everything is the heritage guys look on every, and the and the director looks. You can't go, so we build a room in a room. We print on it, we put all the things in this wall to do. Look at the floor, you can't you can't touch nothing. Either the ceiling not the wall or the floor and we build a new room. That's the first thing. It's like for three months. It takes six months to plan and to build and it last a few months. The other thing it was shown, it's Sleep and Dream, was the title of the exhibition. It was sponsored by the German Ikea Museum in Dresden. And also, after, and then it was, it goes to London, to the Welcome Trust. And we, you know, for some, for some years, it was it was interesting for us to do this uh, to do this this type of work because it's, it's like performative space. It's it's interesting for us to 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 learn really to learn about space and to work with these people. Another sort of space. Next project, out of context. Out of context means a uh, hybrid high rise in Tbilisi, Georgia. What imagination? Political, social, and formal transport will transport this building into far away Tbilisi, Georgia. Our approach it's Georgia Watts Avenue in the middle of Tbilisi, the capital. That's on the way, probably. You know this building, it's the Ministry of Transport on the way from the airport to the city. Uh, down here is the former Stalin Avenue, late Revolution Avenue. And five years ago it's named George W. Bush Avenue. It's, uh, the only, but there is no context. What's the right building for for such a to answer this question? One should know that Georgia is seeking to cement its connections with the West, 
by means of an architecture statement, if you will, of which more and more are to be found in a modern Tbilisi building for investors that is in the global designs of glass and steel. Putting the hybrid high rise within this political context precisely is attempt to us align with the straight wishes of Georgian ruling politicians. The absence of a local architecture might lead us to the same conclusions for all the world building tradition in Germany, uh, in Georgia, undoubtedly exists. It will seem that there is that no wishes to give much to the content of transformation. Seen in this light, the hybrid high rise is a looking forward statement, even if that is a form that yet is to be defined. Examining, examining the crown plan and the innovation as long as it becomes apparent to the authors. Yes. We worked on the we worked on a, on casing windows to give them in this loggia type. Superstructure was done in the Turkey. In Turkey, from from Georgia came nothing. Yeah, that's that was another aspect. When we started. From here came the money. From the oil. And. Yeah, I have to explain it. Is it was in in the middle of the of the building process. There was there was this safety uh, device. It means there was uh, the the ministry of the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs sent us there. No voyages to Georgia uh, go out of the land. Uh, parts of the land are um, occupied by Russians, two Russian troops, and uh, yeah, we, we finished the building after the war. It's, it changed the building because the the use of the building is totally different. Inside the, first, the facade still exists, but the, the interior is, is totally, the use of the building is totally different. Ways. Our plants with the casement windows, and it's the facade is done with casement windows, and this huge objects will bring light into the, into the building. It was an interesting country and interesting to do another building like an uh, office building. Back to Germany, back to, to Cologne. The archaeological zone in, in Cologne. This project carries a great tradition. It, when it comes 
the building using in Cologne, the museum for the history of Cologne. Uh, it's here. In the in the fifties, after the destruction of Cologne, it was it was open. Here the it's not the post-war, it's the Roman, it's, at least it's not the post-war uh, the foundations are it's the Roman archaeological part. At this time they are open because all the the buildings are away. And our site is this over fifteen over fifteen centuries the, this place was more or less was more or less a small small uh, place in front of the city hall. Here is the museum from uh, Oswald Matthias Unas. And since the war, since the war, this space is open. Below, below are a lot of, at the heart of the archaeological zone, it's the so-called Praetorium, as it was the official headquarter resident of the Roman government. And this structure once served as the least administration center of the ruins of Lower Germania. Another complex uh, recently undergoing excavation is the former Jewish center, uh, Jewish quarter of Cologne. The community is documented early as in the year 321 after Christ. It's also below and how to build a museum in such a site. We want a, we want a competition. Okay. Four years ago, I hope it takes not so long as the as the dome to, to realize it. I believe they need seven hundred years to finish the we are after five years. Um, the excavations are still ongoing. The major in the moment will 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 give for the museum fifty two thousand million euros, but the excavation and to build above the excavation is very very hard <coughs> because you have to it's, we can't destroy or, yeah, it's, to destroy the, the excavations it's, it's, it's impossible it's the, we have to show it some pictures that's the renaissance entrance of the that's the tower of the town hall that's the Hansa Halle for Talgasse and the layout of the building. The building is like a submarine. You see that the archaeological cell is much bigger than the than the than what you then the upgoing building. That's the first that's the first thing we, we have to, to find an architecture to to come in the town and not to destroy the town. It's like it I would say it's like a tent. It's like a tent and a bridge because we can't, in the, in the zone, we can't do any foundation 
So we built the, the museum. It's like a, a superstructure. I'll show you next. Why Klaus Bollinger from Frankfurt? It, so it's, it makes sense in this way to, to build a steel construction and with a span of more than 50 meters and then do the excavations below to protect to protect the the room and protect the day the, the mid-age excavations below. Here is the Renaissance entrance to the the city hall and in front it looks so at the moment it is impossible to build there. I hope the articles will finish in two years and we hope that we can start to build there. <coughs> For the, from the side of the of the exhibition the parkour is fixed because all the, the things are, are in situ. One perspective of the, of the room. You know, from outside to so. What works? It's a reference from India. How to work with, with stone. How, how filigrane it can work. Oh, that's wrong. Any other reference from Megan, from Otto Fürk? He works with marble, translucent marble. We, we did some research. But in the moment, our we have enough. The, the budget is, is good in it's good in, in, in Cologne, but our client uh, you always need a client to follow you, and our client there is here is he don't like that he don't like our way to work or our way to work that we say we do some research, we build mock-ups. And you are, you will be the first to do this, and you don't accept it in the moment. So we have some problems to, and we have a lot of different facades to to implement. It. I show some material. We we'll put glass and stone together. But it all exact to the development. This is the, the old Renaissance entrance in our new building. And it's the so called Spanish Bau. It's a good building from the, it's a, from Schwarz, from the 50s. And our building. Forms the, the old new urban space in this stone material. Um, in the in the basement, uh, sorry, in the basement we we implement a lot of old material. We found uh, it's a big tradition. To, to build with this old material. The upgoing building is here, and the whole archaeological zone is it's more than twice the, the upgoing building. The, the museum, the tech 
company is on the roof because we can prove. And, uh, there is no basement. There is the it's below the overmask for the street. There is a mikvah more than 20 meters deep. And that's the building spans from here to here. That's the mikvah. And in the moment we are we do some research to they, the archaeological they found so much stones that they can't show all and we say it's perfect. We work with the old stones. We try it's our plan B because plan A is not accepted by the client. So we we try to to make a try to make proof to say with those material. So next Hamburg in the so called Harbor City in Harbor City we finished last year and Ecumenic center, it's a cloister. It's a cloister, it's part of the so called Shanghai Ali. And we want to work, we want a competition. We are the only architect in the competition who work with bricks. The other work with a lot of materials, they work with stone, they work with glass, they work with a lot of materials who work with bricks. And we, uh, there is the chapel, and in, in the upper floors are is the convent with a with a bell. Our drawings, our model, we bring it tomorrow. The reference from. Bürger, the architect to do the Chile House. In, it's a church in Berlin. I like it. He also worked in the office of Behrens. It's a very good reference for us for bricks. Our approach, who would <coughs> make some things with the bricks. The concrete. The building itself was also not so bad. Our model, it's not only model, it's made of each stone layer, is, it's made of paper, and but we use it for, it's, we use the geometry, we are not in the parametrical field. But you, you work with this to make such a building. to show it's it's the 
hoisted little shell. Inside, we all see the story. The chapel. It was a little different <laughs> from last year. Now they, the next build, they start with the next building. It's the part of the, of the street. That's the only building. It's the only building. It goes out of from the right, from the right angle, from a rectangle of Portugal Lake, where the rectangle building is. It's, it's in the moving wall. Yeah, it's like an abscess on the on the courtyard side. In one year, the courtyard is closed because they built in the in addition to our building. They are some three other buildings are planned in the moment, and they started this year to to build it up. The Hinz Museum and Document Center. It's not out of context, it's at, uh, close to the, in the German countryside, close to the Luxembourg border border. And yeah, the landscape around the village of Hinz is in the in the countryside characterized by smooth hills and, and agriculturally used fields. No original place is referred to its use between 39 and 45, when the site was a special camp for political prisoners, especially for uh, Luxembourg citizens who want to join. Um, the Germans declared the 31 Luxembourg to part of Germany, they have to go to Wehrmacht and they don't pay fees. And they, they bring 300 or 400 in, the, in this camp and they join a lot of them. Our uh, winning concept for the document center includes an archive, a research library, seminary, and exhibition space. We do all. We do the exhibition, and we are the architects. It was a very good client. Uh, we designed in this unconventional project, uh, see that's institution and regional development strategy. The building and itself is 43 meters long. The structures occupies the gentle slope rising from two to seven meters high. In the all-in-one structure, a roof facade consists in over 3,000 different triangular plates of 12 millimeter protein steel. These were welded together in a workshop to the form of 12 large elements. They were then assembled on the site. They came over the, over the highway or the autobahn during the night. These angles between the individual panels were calculated to ensure that the elements have an adequate structural height we showed, that's the, the photos we show in the archive, we use them for the exhibition. But it's nothing, nothing was on the site. It's, uh, it's a field when we start the exhibition. One of the former prisoners, uh, they give some artifacts for the exhibition. That's the, the three-dimensional model. It's more like a ship than a house.
that's the that's the, that I want to show. That's the it's not a the construction shape, but it's, I mean this here. It's the it's the adequate structural high that the that the entire construction forms a rigid folded plate. It's necessary to have to have this high that it that it works as a structural form. Not only the the metal structure form uh, follow the form, also the the doors, the windows. We are looking on several. We we did on several um, geometrical. Here some models or models we worked out, and then we produced it. What it was totally. Constructed in in the, in the not in the inside in the workshop. workshop. The wrench, rather envelope and case, and along the exhibition space, the seminar room, the library, the archive and offices. The lines of site giving the impression to a single special unit. The design project press was developed from the from inside towards outside, around the central exhibition archive space in a series of pockets containing archives, unit, large exhibition, and small research cells. Push the volumes towards outwards into the landscape as a shelter that protects historic material and relics. The document center is a, is a rather converted building only opening to the landscape on the valley side. The opening, it's the windows. They can be opened, frameless. The, the building in itself, it's generally uh, divided in winter. It's it's cold, cold in summer, very hot. It's from the sustainability aspects. Is it's it's absolute. It's it has very high also gold standards. It's very high. The the budget was good. We can spend in this. We can also spend. A lot Money and these things, we were very good engineers who did it with us in winter time. Summer, what? Right. In the roof. It's part of the, it's, it's part of the landscape. Yeah, it's inside. It's, we print also. We learned in our exhibitions, so we can, for three months, you can do some folds, but not for years. And we printed on this, on this, very uh, on wood. And it's, it's a bit like fresco. In the middle age, they put it on the in fresco, the the color, and we put it on the the way. We put it in the deformation in the walls. We print it on the walls, on the wood walls. All all is included in this in the inner shell. Uh, this central opening defines the exact position of the building in the landscapes and describes a precise viewpoint across fade from, from a historical photography and the contemporary perspective. It's an overlay, but it, I say it's the fourth dimension. You see the you see through the the, the historical photography on the side and you can imagine what happens. 
the Arenas Dana skin consists on a triangular birch plywood panels on which photographies and texts were inscribed. Biodirect printing process documents are not applied on the building but directly linked to it, it like a contemporary form of fresco. Insulating documents and the wooden interior from the interior exterior steel blade construction and making the triangular window, windows flash with the outer skin as well as openable and frameless required development of, of specifically constructed prototypes. Yeah, it's the last, the last slide. It shows, I would say, it's part of the landscape and, and like, uh, perhaps it's also, it's not a building. It is a building, but it's not a building. And I hope I, I can explain in, in the foreign language our, our approach to, to architecture, our approach to, the, I would say, to the fourth dimension. And it's a fact, in our work, it's perhaps our work in parts from the specific, but it's the four dimensions theme in architecture, not only material, Material is, is material in our aspects is has something to do with time, and for us, material and time are basics of our work. I hope I knew that it's clear after my lecture. Thank you.